Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're in the left gun pit of Turret 2 on Battleship New Jersey. And in today's video, we're going to compare the 16-inch guns of an Iowa-class battleship to the 8-inch guns of New Orleans-class cruisers. We're really excited about New Orleans-class cruisers this week because the Ocean Exploration Trust on board the exploration vessel Nautilus is diving on the wrecks in Iron Bottom Sound, which includes three New Orleans-class cruisers. Hopefully you've been watching. Uh, Eastern local time, they uh, dove on the wreck of Vincennes on July 4th, and over the course of the 5th and the 6th, they've also dove on the wrecks of Quincy and Astoria, and possibly the bow of USS New Orleans. So they've gotten somewhere between three and four New Orleans class cruisers this week. As you're watching this on the news, and this is the biggest thing going on in naval history right now, so you will see it on the news at some point, especially if you're interested in this channel and presumably therefore World War II naval history. Uh, if you're watching this, then you're going to no doubt see these great clips of the gun barrels. Much of these cruisers was obliterated. They're all missing their bows. They're, uh, many are missing superstructures, funnels, like any of those iconic features. But the guns are still there. They're all sitting upright uh, with their gun turrets, very, very visible. So I have no doubt in my mind that the footage that you're going to see on the news is going to be of those 8-inch gun turrets on these various ships. So just how big are they? You're never going to get the chance to go on board a New Orleans-class heavy cruiser. Seven were made, none are left above water today. But all four completed Iowa-class battleships have been saved as museums, and between a million and a million and a quarter visitors a year come out to these vessels. If you're in the naval history, odds are you're one of them. So you've got a basis for comparison of what you're seeing here. One of the hardest things of getting interested in underwater archaeology, especially for these uh, vessels that are, I don't know, half a mile underwater or something like that, um, is get, getting a concept of just what you're looking at. How big is it? What, what kind of damage did it take to sink it? So this will give you a little bit of an idea there. Iowa-class battleships have 16-inch, 50-caliber guns. That means that the projectile that they fire, and therefore the diameter of the barrel, is 16 inches wide. And the length of the barrel is 50 times 16 inches long. For a New Orleans-class heavy cruiser, they have 8-inch 55 caliber guns. That means that their projectiles and barrel diameter are 8 inches, and that the barrel is 55 times 8 inches long. That was the premier heavy cruiser gun caliber for the U.S. Navy during World War II. And you see it on all of the treaty cruisers, you see it on the Lexington-class aircraft carriers, and then you see it on the newer classes like Baltimore, Oregon City, and even the Des Moines-class post-war. Even though the diameter is only half that of a 16-inch gun, the other numbers don't compare quite as favorably. One of those gun barrels weighs about 17 tons versus 120 for a 16-inch gun. A 16-inch gun barrel is about 68 feet long, but the 8-inch barrels are about 37 foot 3 inches long. I think this is the coolest stat in the whole video. Iowa-class battleships, in theory, can fire two rounds a minute. In practice, it's closer to one round a minute. Uh, but New Orleans-class cruisers are designed to fire three to four rounds per minute but there's evidence that they fired five to six rounds per minute, especially during some of these early World War II uh, nighttime surface actions. And the way they did it was a uh, sailor alter technique known as cue balling. So when you're ramming the shell, you want to get your rammer all the way in to push the shell until it hits the base ring. Then when you're ramming the powder, you're not trying to ram it quite as far. There are two speed settings for the rammer, fast, for driving the shell so that the brass ring at the bottom engages the rifling, and slow for gently tapping the powder in. Cue balling is when you hit the shell as fast as you can with the rammer, but retract it before letting it go the full stroke. That shorter stroke means that you're able to do it quicker. And 
by just hitting it and then retracting, you're still propelling the shell with enough force to jam it into the breech of the gun. Obviously, this isn't the safest thing in the world. Armor-piercing shells do have a base detonating fuse on them that you're slapping into, but uh, th this is combat and it's kill or be killed, so it's really cool that they were able to nearly double their rate of fire by using this technique. All of that said, at least two of the gun barrels on these ships show evidence of damage. One of the gun barrels has fallen back into its recoil but not returned to battery. One of the barrels on uh, Quincy is just sheared off halfway down. All of these ships suffered significant damage, so these could certainly be uh, damage from that. However, it could have to do with, uh, with the shell not being seated properly or detonating in the breach or, or something else like that. Uh, we, we just don't know for sure. Iowa-class battleship shells come in two main flavors, armor-piercing and high-capacity. The armor-piercing shell is about 6 feet tall and weighs 2,700 pounds. The high-capacity shell is about 1,900 pounds and about 5 feet tall. There are a couple different shell types for the 8-inch gun as well, but they're all about 260 pounds for the New Orleans-class heavy cruisers. They're not able to use the super heavy shells, which are about 100 pounds heavier that later American heavy cruisers could use, even though they're the same 8-inch diameter. The hoist just couldn't take that extra size and weight. But um, 260 pounds for all their types of shells, and their shells are about 3 feet tall. So half the height, half the diameter of the battleship shells. It's amazing how much more weight the battleship shells have, though. And it's not just in the entire shell, 2,700 pounds versus 260. The burster charges of both are made out of Composition D, a plastic explosive, similar to the C4 that you see in Hollywood all the time. Um, for an armor-piercing shell for an Iowa-class battleship, it's about 40 pounds of Comp D. For a New Orleans-class heavy cruiser armor-piercing shell, 3.6 pounds, less than one-tenth of the explosive power. For the uh, high-capacity rounds, the, the equivalent of a high-explosive shell, uh, they hold just over 21 pounds of powder, so still only half of an armor-piercing shell, while uh, the battleship's high-capacity rounds hold somewhere around 135 pounds of burster charge. Um, that said, a new gun for an Iowa-class battleship is only going to throw one of these shells at 2,500 feet per second. It's a relatively low-velocity shell. You, you can even see it traveling through the air as it leaves the barrel. It's going so slow. Um, these 8-inch guns for New Orleans-class cruisers could get up to 3,000 feet per second, so they are going to be hitting with a little bit more force uh, from that energy they're able to impart. Uh, however, at 3,000 feet per second, they're not all that accurate. They have terrible dispersion. So um, by World War II, the velocity was down closer to about 2,800 feet per second. Still better than the Iowa class. Two statistics that the New Orleans has had that are better than the Iowa class. New Jersey carries about 130 projectiles per barrel. The New Orleans class carried about 150 projectiles per barrel, which seems like more, but with their higher rate of fire, they could actually shoot through their magazines faster than an Iowa class. But while an Iowa class battleship's guns only last about 300 shots before they have to be re-rifled, the New Orleans class can get the New Orleans class can get 715 shots out of their guns before they need re-rifling. Re for elevation, an Iowa class can go from negative two degrees, used for cleaning the barrels out, all the way up to 45 degrees, at which they get their maximum range of uh, right around 23 miles. For a New Orleans class, they can depress negative 10 degrees. They can only elevate to positive 41 degrees. So in theory, their guns would be able to shoot further if they could elevate higher. Now, as it is, they can shoot about 16 miles at that maximum range, so not too much less than an Iowa-class battleship. At that range, their shells are in the air for 83 and a half seconds, 
versus 88 seconds for an Iowa-class battleship's projectiles. One of their gun turrets weighs about 294 tons, while on an Iowa-class battleship, it's about uh, 2,200 tons. A lot of that comes from the barrels, which we've already, already uh, talked about earlier. A lot of it comes from the armor plating. The thickest armor on either turret is the faceplate. New Orleans-class cruisers have 8-inch Class B armor for their faceplate. Iowa-class battleships have 17-inch Class A armor for theirs. The loading angle for the guns on an Iowa-class battleship is positive 5 degrees. For a New Orleans-class cruiser, it's positive 9 degrees. Iowa-class battleships have about a thousand electric motors on them, with the largest ones being the 300 horsepower motors that rotate the turrets. For a New Orleans-class cruiser, that motor is 30 horsepower. Each barrel for an Iowa-class battleship's guns has its own 60 horsepower motor? has its own 60 horsepower motor, while a New Orleans class cruiser has all three of its barrels on the same um, sleeve, so they're all being hoisted by a single 18 horsepower motor. The New Orleans class cruiser's eight inch guns can punch through about four inches of deck armor or three inches of belt armor at their maximum range. At closer range, like four and a half miles, they can punch through more than 10 inches of armor plate which meant that they could overmatch the armor plate of Japanese Congo-class battlecruisers like they encountered off the waters of Guadalcanal. There is no range at which the New Orleans-class armor-piercing shell can defeat the armor of an Iowa-class battleship. Iowas are basically immune to shell fire from the New Orleans-class. While tables don't go below 4.5 inches, it might be that within two miles of range, quote unquote knife fighting range for a naval gunfight, uh, the shells could defeat the 12.1 inch inclined armor belt of an Iowa class battleship. But I doubt that they could defeat that as part of the system of armor that includes the one and a half inch shell plating and the other layers of steel around it. And likewise, uh, the New Orleans class cannot get far enough away or plunge at a great enough angle to overmatch the six inch decks of Iowa class battleships. They can still punch through the shell plating and cause flooding, and they can still punch through the relatively unarmored bows and sterns of Iowa class battleships, but they probably can never cause enough reserve of buoyancy to be lost from uh, below water hits. So which one do you think is better? The higher rate of fire of the eight inch guns that have pretty close to the same maximum range as the Iowa class battleships, or the just absolutely massive but slow firing 16 inch projectiles that New Jersey can put out. Let us know in the comments section down below. Also, let us know if you saw anything on the Nautilus footage that you think was a, a more compelling image than the, the images of some of the gun barrels. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below to follow the live footage coming out of the exploration vessel Nautilus, and we highly recommend that you go check them out and support them if you can. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.